Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan. Welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera and my video on Yashica Flex Twin Lens uh, Reflex or TLR cameras. Uh, today I'm not going to be sharing with you one or two, but I will be sharing seven different Yashica Flex cameras with you. Uh, if you have an old Yashica Flex camera and you would like to know how it works, uh, please watch the video and hopefully you can uh, will be able to answer your questions uh, there. Uh, if you're shopping for a twin lens reflex camera and would like to know which one is best for you, uh, yeah, continue watching and hopefully this will be informative. If you're interested in purchasing one of these cameras, I sell these at my Etsy and eBay stores. Uh, please check the description below the video for links to my stores. I sell TLR cameras as well as other kinds of uh, vintage Japanese cameras. So, uh, the Ashika Flex uh, was introduced in the 1950s, around 1950 or so. Uh, before making cameras, uh, the Yashica company was known as the Yashima Optical Company. And it was a manufacturer of microscopes and medical instruments. Uh, in the early 1950s, Japan had made uh, deals with America to have zero tariffs on things like photographic equipment. And uh, it was thought that uh, demand for cameras and this equipment would uh, increase. So uh, optical companies in Japan, regardless of what kind of uh, uh, devices they made, uh, most of them decided to get into making cameras as well to take advantage of this uh, new market. Uh, Yashica uh, or Yashima at the time uh, produced their first uh, popular camera model and it was called the Pigeon Flex which came around uh, came out around 1950 or so. Uh, the Pigeon Flex is a very simple and easy to use twin lens reflex camera. Uh, uh, Japan wasn't very technologically advanced in those days, but uh, they were able to make really good quality uh, optical instruments and mechanical devices. And the Pigeon Flex was an early example. It's kind of an odd name for a camera, uh, Pigeon Flex, but uh, there were many odd names in the 1950s using with the word flex behind them. Uh, Japan uh, swiped the flex term from Roly Flex in Germany and countless manufacturers in Japan used it. You have, of course, the Pigeon Flex, the Yashima Flex, the Ashika Flex, the Toyoko Flex, Minolta Flex, Olympus Flex, Aries Flex, Elmo Flex, uh, Rico Flex, and a bunch of other flex cameras. Uh, maybe 50 or 60 different versions. Uh, if you if you had an example of every Japanese camera which had flex at the end of it, you probably wouldn't have room to fit them in your closet. Uh, the Pigeon Flex, uh, I'll go over how it works and the features and functions. The secret of the Pigeon Flex and the early Yashica Flex uh, success was the Tomioka tri lousar lens, uh, which was an amazing performer. And uh, it was not used only by Yashica. Tomioka was a maker of other uh, make of other of lenses for other makers, but uh, all the early Yashica cameras used the Tomioka lens. It was uh, uh, just excellent. Uh, the controls of the camera, the main ones, are located around the lens. We have a dial for adjusting the shutter speed. And on the bottom here, we have uh, another dial for setting the aperture. We have a self-timer lever here and the shutter cocking lever on the side. Now, this camera I just got in and I haven't done anything to it yet. It's been dropped and it doesn't work. I'm just using it as an example of, ha of a Pigeon Flex camera. Uh, and here we have the shutter uh, release button. Uh, the self-timer on these cameras was not reliable, and if you have one, I don't recommend using it because they're prone to sticking and they're a little bit difficult to unstick. If they are stuck, you can usually free them up by turning the camera so the uh, lever is pointing upward and then putting some uh, a lighter fluid or a naphtha on the lever and let it, dripping, let it drip inside. And sometimes that will free it up. If it doesn't, simply push the lever to the end of its travel uh, and usually that will unlock the shutter mechanism and you can start using the shutter again. Uh, the right side is similar to most uh, Yashica Flex cameras. You have a focusing knob uh, with a depth of field scale on it and you have a film winding knob above that. The earlier cameras didn't feature a mechanical counter uh, like uh, cameras, medium format cameras from the 1920s onward which used roll film. Uh, you would have to open up a window on the back and then you wind the film up and center uh, the numbers which come up on the back of the film in the middle of the window. When you're using these cameras, make sure to line up the, win the number precisely in the middle of the window so your images don't overlap on the film. 
This is quite a simple and easy system to use and it's very reliable and it does away with a lot of unnecessary or unreliable complication to the camera. On this side here we have pretty much nothing but the uh, uh, socket for the uh, flash sync cord and we have the pins which retain the take up spool and the film or take up spool and film spool. Uh, the Pigeon Flex was produced in rather limited numbers until it was replaced by the Yashima Flex, which is, as you can tell, uh, pretty much the identical camera. Everything on the uh, Yashima Flex is exactly the same as the Pigeon Flex. There are some slight differences to the uh, focusing hood. Uh, the one on the uh, Yashima Flex is better made and more reliable than the one which came on the uh, uh, Pigeon Flex and also it featured a uh, sports finder which th was not available on the Pigeon Flex. And let me release this. Uh, the Yashima Flex featured the same control layout and the same Tomioka tri lousar lens it featured the same focusing and film winding knobs, uh, the exact same uh, window on the back for winding the film. Uh, there was one improvement on this side and that was the addition of a shoot amount of flash gun, uh, which of course wasn't available on the Pigeon Flex camera. Uh, the Ashima Flex uh, was produced uh, for a while and then it was replaced by an uh, identical camera called the Yashika Flex. Uh, uh, I th Yashika thought maybe the word Yashima was a little bit too Japanese sounding for the export market and took the two words Yashima and camera and combined them together to come up with the word Yashika. And of course the rest is history. Yashika, Fle Yashika cameras became quite popular and the uh, Yashika Flex TLR was the most popular twin lens reflex camera made in the world for a number of years. Uh, the Yashica Flex was replaced by the Yashica A, which featured a number of uh, cosmetic and functional improvements. Uh, the shutter speed dial was kept in the same place. Uh, an improvement uh, was made to the uh, shutter cocking lever. After cocking the lever, it would come back up to the upright position, and this would prevent your finger or gloves from catching on the uh, shutter charging lever when you shot a photo, which would, uh, which would mess up the exposure. Uh, the aperture uh, di or la lever was moved to a better position and allowed you to more easily see the settings which you selected. Uh, the right side is exactly the same as the earlier cameras with the uh, focus and winding knob in the same places. And the Ashika A also featured the very simple uh, uh, film winding system where you line up the numbers. And on the left side, uh, everything is exactly the same uh, as the earlier cameras. Uh, the Yashica A was a very solid camera, much improved over the earlier cameras. Uh, better made, it has a better uh, feel to it, better quality. Uh, two different uh, versions were available. This is a gray version with a gray paint and a light gray leatherette. Uh, it, but most of them were made in black. So the gray one's a little bit more hard to find. Um, I usually have uh, at least one of the gray models for sale. Uh, the Yashica A was replaced by the Yashica A2 and AS cameras. And uh, you can see uh, some improvements on this camera, namely the, the white face around the lens, which allowed you to more easily see the aperture and uh, shutter uh, numbers when you were making adjustments to the camera. Uh, the shutter charging system is a little bit more uh, rugged and heavily made and uh, otherwise the, on the front they are about the same. The right side is exactly the same. You have the uh, same focusing and film winding knobs and once again you have a window on the back for uh, winding the film and the left side is exactly the same. The difference between the A2 and the AS are the uh, assortment of shutter speeds. The A2 features a, a slow shutter speed, a maximum of one eighth of a second, whereas this model, the AS, will go all the way down to one second. So if you like longer exposures, the AS is the better camera. But otherwise, uh, if you look at them, if you don't look closely at the uh, uh, shutter speed numbers, uh, they look identical. 
The A2 and AS were replaced by the Yashica B, which was a more technologically advanced and expensive camera. Uh, it featured a new system, similar to the Rolleiflex, Flex, of uh, dials on the front to adjust the aperture and shutter speeds. If you were focusing through the camera and uh, looking through the focusing hood and loop, all you had to do was peek in front and you could see the window, uh, which would show you what aperture and shutter speeds you had selected. Uh, this made it much easier than lifting up the camera to try to see what the settings were. And the Ashika Flex B also uh, introduced the mechanical film counter, uh, which is a quite easy system to use. When you load the film and you wind it until you get to the number one, uh, the uh, winder will lock on that number. And when you want to move to the next exposure, you push the button in the center and then turn the knob and it will turn to the next number and lock in place. And this ensures that you have accurate frame spacing. There's nothing on the back of the camera because now it has a mechanical film uh, counter. And mm. the left side here is just like the earlier uh, uh, Pigeon Flex, Yashima Flex, Yashica Flex, and Yashica A cameras. Uh, the Yashica Bs are a little bit harder to come by. Uh, they were the most expensive Yashica TLR at the time. And uh, because this was so, uh, they, they weren't sold as a, in large numbers compared to some of the other models. A model which was produced at the same time as the Yashica Flex B was the Yashica Flex C, which was a simplified and less expensive camera which had the same lens. Uh, as you can see, the Ashika Flex C has the same white face dial as uh, the A2 and AS. And an odd thing about the Ashika Flex C is it went back to the early style shutter where the charging lever stayed down. So when you're using one of these, make sure to, uh, you know, if you're wearing gloves or where your fingers are, we need to press the shutter so it doesn't interfere with the travel of the shutter charging lever. Otherwise, the uh, shutter speed, you know, the shutter will hang up and you won't get a good exposure. Uh, an odd thing uh, which was introduced with the Yashica Flex C was the reset system for the film counter dial, uh, which tricks a lot of people who are trying to use one of these cameras. And it, uh, and makes a lot of people think that the camera is broken. Uh, when you're using one of these cameras, uh, the film counter system works exactly the same as the Ashika uh, Flex uh, B. You wind it to the next number and then you push the button to unlock it and so on. But uh, to reset the film counter, it's automatic on the B. When you open the door, it resets to zero, but it doesn't do that on the C. To reset it on the C, you have this little uh, release lever in the center. You have to pull that backward and push the unlock button on the middle of the uh, film winding knob. And that resets the film counter to S. And then you can load the film and start. Uh, the Ashika Flex C was the most popular model sold here in Japan. There are zillions and zillions of these here. Uh, the only weak points to the Ashika Flex C are the self timer, which half the time doesn't work. And sometimes the uh, focusing rack becomes loose and there will be some travel in the front of the camera. If the travel is minor, it doesn't really have any effect on the photos. But if the camera clunks, if the lenses clunk around when you move the camera, then it's going to affect the photos. Unfortunately, repairing the focusing rack is quite difficult and time intensive on these cameras. Uh, I don't like to do it myself. And uh, if you have a camera with one with this problem, it's cheaper to get another camera than to have it fixed. Uh, the Ashika Flex C was uh, replaced, the B and C were replaced by the Ashika Flex Auto. And the Auto was a much more uh, modern and advanced twin lens reflex camera, very similar to the Rolle Flex cameras, uh, pretty much a, a copy. Uh, instead of the shutter charging lever and film winding lever, the Yashica Auto, like the uh, Yashica Automat and 124, which came out later, uh, featured an integrated uh, shutter charging and film winding mechanism. And it moved the focusing knob and uh, depth of focus scale to the left side of the camera. Uh, it has the same uh, wheels to adjust the uh, shutter speed and aperture as you would find on the Ashika Flex uh, B. And the controls otherwise are the same. There's a, an 
an improvement on the side of the camera which allows you to quickly set to the X sync speed when uh, shooting uh, with a flash. And from the Yashica A and up, the flash sync is moved to the front of the camera instead of on the lower side. So they could get away with using a shorter wire here. Uh, the last thing I'm going to show you, this is, believe it or not, the seventh camera which I've shown you, the seventh Yashica Flex. I'm going to show you quickly how to uh, load the film uh, in one of these cameras. And uh, the process is the same pretty much for all of the cameras, uh, and it's not difficult. Uh, the first thing you have to do is uh, unlock the bottom of the camera and pull up on the claw and open the film door. When you look inside the camera, you should have a film take-up spool. Uh, all the TLR cameras I have, I always make sure to include one of these so you can immediately load film and start using it. Here we have the film chamber, and on either side of the film cha chamber we have red arrows. On some of the earlier Yashikas, the arrows are white, but they all have these arrows which you use when you load the film. To load the film, uh, first you have to pull up on the locking latch pin and turn it so it locks in the upward position. The Ashika Flex cameras are nice in that they allow this feature. Other cameras, they do not lock, so you have to hold them up as you uh, put in the film. Now you take a roll of film and first put it in on the pin on the other side, push it in, and then turn this until it unlocks and moves downwards and catches in the center of the film spool. Uh, you can set the camera on its front and then pull the backing paper over the film chamber and the lead of the paper you insert into the take-up spool. And the next thing you have to do is you have to wind the film. On the regular Yashica Flex, just turn the dot knob located here, the film winding knob. On the Auto or 124 or Yashica Met cameras, uh, turn the shutter charging and film winding dial. And you see this wide white arrow which is coming up uh, you line that up with the two arrows on either side of the film chamber and then you are ready to close uh, the film door and make sure to lock it set, lock it shut by turning that dial. And then, uh, once it's set here, With this, with the uh, uh, auto or uh, other cameras, you have to keep winding it one shot at a time until the number one aligns uh, in the window. With the other Yashica Flex cameras with the uh, uh, mechanical counter, you can simply just keep winding and winding nonstop and it will lock at the number one when you're uh, lined up on the first frame. On the earlier Yashica cameras, uh, keep winding and winding and winding and winding and watch carefully. Uh, a series of dots will appear uh, for differing in size as the number begins to come up to the window. This is warning you that the number is coming up and that you should pay attention so you don't turn the, too far. If you turn it too far, uh, you can't really turn it backwards. It only goes one way. So if you go too far, uh, the best thing to do is just go ahead and keep winding until you get to the next exposure. And uh, once you have the number one set up in either the window on the back or in the window on the mechanical film counter, then the camera is ready to shoot. Anyway, uh, we're almost 20 minutes into this video and that's about all I have time to talk about uh, for these uh, about these cameras. I, I think it's enough. I'm, my voice is getting a little bit tired here. Uh, if you have any questions about the Yashica uh, Twin Lens Reflex cameras, uh, feel free to ask them in the comments section below. Uh, if you like the video, uh, uh, please click the like button. And if you're interested in seeing uh, more videos about uh, vintage Japanese cameras of any kind, uh, please uh, clip, click the subscribe button. I'll be uh, adding more videos in the future. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and we hope that uh, you tune in again soon.